Hello and welcome to another episode of Blunders on Bothwellians, the Wounded Witch edition. This is our homebrew 5th edition campaign based on Dungeons and Dragons. I say based because, well, we homebrew a lot. This is a Tuesday party uh, known as Carnal Eclipse, continuing their adventures in episode 51. Wow, 51. It's mad. Um, they have currently uh, been down in the Underrealm, having many adventures down there, and they have sadly had to leave their two demon friends behind, and they have washed up back somewhere in the world of Mercer. They weren't quite sure where, but they have washed up on an island, and through some history checking from the Bard, they have worked out that they may well be in the elusive island known as World's Edge. The land that explorers are plenty have tried to reach, but none have ever returned. It is rumoured to be a piece of stars that have fallen down and struck Mercer. There is a great mist around it and a great magical sense that Hannibal is not too happy about. So, we come back into it and here we are with the Tuesday party. Oh, yeah, Hello! Oh, Why is there a Mary Poppins gift? Yeah. This worries me. <laughs> Honestly, I kept thinking of Daft Punk music for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, guys, uh, welcome. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, welcome to World's Edge, where Arissa has announced to the group that that's where she believes you guys are currently. Um, most of you will have heard of it as a place of rumour and mystery, um, and Arissa recounts to you that she has heard many tales of sailors and adventurers who have tried to reach the mysterious land, but none have ever come back. So, plenty of strange rumours about this place. Uh, you guys currently <laughs> are still alive! Yay! I love the gifts! <laughs> <laughs> I live for the gifts. I, I DM for the gifts. Um, yes, yes, you guys are still alive! Woo! Marvellous. And you have washed up on the beach as you have come along the currents of the quite warm water as well. And as you guys step out, those of you who were in the water, uh, even you, Apricity, who was dunked in it unceremoniously again by Varric, <laughs> as soon as you step onto the golden sand, you immediately start to dry off and you feel your clothes and everything just evaporating away. Uh, the water, not the clothes themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the gift game is so strong. And as you sort of look around, blinking, uh, the world around you, the whole island and lots of the ocean surrounding it, surrounded by great mist and glitter um, hanging in the air. And looking around, you're on the beach itself now. And everyone back at the full health. Uh, tonight we are down an Orissa, a duck paladin, and a uh, reedy. So they are still with us, but they will be rather quiet at the moment. So um, we, will, we will let them know what is occurring. But yes, yeah, so you guys are currently standing on a beautiful beach that stretches all the way around this lagoon of water. And ahead of you, further inland into this island, is a huge, vast forest of trees, all different colours and little glittering specks. Mountains further across on the other side of the island, um, rising up into the distance. And then just behind them, you can make out through a gap in the mountains a little spit of uh, beach. So there's probably a beach on the other side of the island as well. Um, so you wash up. You're all healed, you're all fine, all dry, warm, fairly comfortable. Um, I believe, Vetheritas, there was something you wanted to say to your shield. <laughs> so, Vetheritas is going to prop the shield up in the sand and then just start lecturing it. <laughs> A very, very long lecture about, you know, purpose and duty and... <laughs> The kind of thing that you'd give to, like, a rookie recruit and have them sleeping halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Vetheritas, can you do me a persuasion, please? <laughs> well, this will be interesting. Uh, do, do, do. Bum, bum, bum. Aftermath. Quickly, my notes just say Verti tells off shield. 
currently my notes uh, are Bethertas props up shield and lectures it. Yeah, 20? 23. Three. Not... <laughs> okay. Obviously not Nat, but. <laughs> okay. Um, as you're lecturing this shield and you start saying about, you know, how you're a shield and we have duty and but on all this, the shield itself sort of shifts uncomfortably in the sand, almost as if a, um, a teenager were sort of shuffling their shoulders back and forth. Um, and it's sort of like the very bottom corner of the shield sort of like flicks a bit of sand as if kicking it. Um, <laughs> and then at the end of your speech, it sort of, um, it, it stands like it upright again, so it's big and tall. And it, um, it, it glows a tiny little bit silver, like a very quick sort of whoom. <laughs> the therapist then will pick it up and put it back on his back. <laughs> okay. He'll then uh, proceed to start the ritual to summon his mount back since they're back on dry land. Okay. Alright. Anybody else? Is there anything you would like to do and or say? Why like is there so much pastel? <laughs> there is a lot of pastel. <laughs> I'd like um, to summon a campfire. Yeah. Rosie. Are you going to um, hunt for wood or are you going to uh, I'm use gonna knowledge? I'm going to use craft. Okay. I'm gonna light the, a small campfire with druid craft. Okay. Wait, wait, how is magic working right now? Is it, is it still not working properly, or it works? Um, here's magic. Um, as he goes to start lighting the fire and doing all of that, um, the fire doesn't glow as brightly and it doesn't burn as quickly. It doesn't start as quickly as you would have expected, Varric. Like, it, it's like you strike a match, but it takes you five goes to get it to light up. And the fire itself, it's, it's, it's dim. It's a fire that's been burning for several hours rather than the roaring blaze you would expect. Novigne looks confused and sort of tilts her head to one side and then just steps into your campfire and sits down. <laughs> and at this point, you guys get a slightly bigger, slightly warmer, better campfire going on the beach. I swear this doesn't normally happen. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, magic does seem to be very wonky here. Yes, yes, that's it. That's it. That's the yeah. argument I'm going for. <laughs> um, this whole time, Apricity's just been kind of like hands on her knees on the on the dry land, just like... <gasps> just trying to get over being dunked in the sea again whilst being absolutely part of it. <laughs> um... And she kind of stands up, rubs her eyes, and takes away any vomit from my mouth. You know, Slow you're very around. lucky this planet has more land than sea. I've been to some where practically there was no land. Mostly islands. 90% was the... sea. Your stories are always fascinating, kind of thing. Making me feel better. Um, well, you are lucky. So, Arissa, you said... That you knew that this was Bell's End. What do we know about this place? Arissa thinks, and she describes to you that when she was back home with her family, um, they would meet lots of different people from different walks of life from all over, all over the world. And sailors in particular and adventurers would always tell stories about this legendary place called World's Edge, which is supposed to be right at the very edge of the world, but no one who'd ever set off to get to it had come back. And the descriptions they'd given of where it might be made it sound like it was somewhere in the ocean. And she also remembered, because she rolled very well, she remembered and she says, well, 
because Tiavat was under contract to send us back to Mercer. So we must still be in Mercer and well I don't recognise this place and it's not like any of the countries I've heard of. Strange. I'm mostly worried about the part where they don't come back. We'll survive. We've come back from stranger places than this. Yep. True, but we could use magic to its full potential in those places. Plus, I don't, I don't truly trust this sparkling business in the air. Yeah, but it's cheerful, and you never trust cheerful, so therefore it's probably good. If you say so. The most colorful things are usually the most poisonous. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, Arissa. Slide those goggles on. Did you see more dust from here? Uh, she pops the goggles back on. And she can do. She says the whole island is like covered in spots of speckles of dust. Um, they are strongest off through the mountains and she can't see quite where they go from there. <coughs> but the whole island is like just covered and wrapped in this dust. Um, she describes it and she says it's like it's like it's covered in glitter and then she takes the goggles off and goes even more glitter than it actually already is covered in <laughs> um, well it seems we're in the right place at least yay so she mentioned mountains are they like quite far off into the distance or are they nearby? yes they are several hours journey off into the distance um, on the other side of the island it looks like the forest covers most of this island and then there's sort of a string of like mountains and a sort of half moon shape around the back end of it and then potentially another beach just behind them you can sort of see some golden sand just behind them cool. um how's everyone doing are we all okay no one hurt are they I'm mainly asking you, should we rest for a bit, or should we start moving? It potentially wouldn't hurt to rest. I'd like to get my mount back, but once that's done, it probably... Even if magic is a problem, we could probably still want to have a few spells up our sleeves. Camp here on the beach and making things up. Yeah, well, at least on the beach we'll see anything coming. <coughs> and I mean, I think a campfire is fun, so we can make s'mores! Oh, bad. <laughs> Sorry, I just Do you have marshmallows? Those small. Can I hunt for wild marshmallows? <laughs> There's There's a point to find marshmallows. Marshmallows. Varric, do me a perception check with advantage. Well, well actually, no, well, investigation. Investigation with advantage. Hmm. Okay, and advantage. Wild marshmallow. I'm sorry, I sorry, like this is some type of Hazel and Gretel bullshit. If this island is like a fairy tale, I'm just gonna scream. <laughs> Oh wait, investigation, so not perception. Yeah. Okay, that, because that is a difference of like eight whole points. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, give me both because... Uh, 20, not that, for... Sorry, I typoed. So it will be 20 for investigation and 28 for perception. Yep. Okay, because you start investigating, looking around, sort of half hoping you don't find anything that looks particularly edible on this beach um you don't even find any shells it's all just complete sand that's all glittering gold and silver however Varric, on such a decent roll as you're looking around sort of going oh as you stare at those mountains what you thought was snow at the very top of them does start to look oddly textured and you have a sneaking suspicion that there might be some sort of marshmallowy edible substance that sits on them in place of snow. 
Uh, I'm gonna point like the point at the mountains. I'm gonna jump up and down, and I'm gonna go. There's marshmallows there. There's marshmallows there. We have to go now. We have to go now. Beric, no. Yes. <laughs> I thought you wanted rest. Yeah, but marshmallows. We will go there regardless. We can rest for a bit. But marshmallows. But a raisin baby. How about if we sleep now and then you can have marshmallows breakfast when we get? Fine. <laughs> and no flying away. I will be awake watching you. Aww. Vitharitis is probably about halfway through casting his at the minute just doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Right there. Um, can, I, uh, um, can I actually prepare some food or something? Like, I'm gonna assume that Varric has some edible food on him. I just always assume Varric has some sort of edible mm. something. I'd like to start cooking a meal, just like any meal that's decent enough for Varric to eat, so. It has to be edible, and it has to taste, well, like food. Okay. Are you making enough for everyone, or just for yourself? Well, he'll start out just for himself, and then he'll like look around, and he'll start making more for the people at him as well. Okay. And he'll, like, sigh a little bit as he pours more food from his personal storage into the pot. <laughs> okay. So, um, Varric, I'm going to say... Nice D and D staple. You've got a fire. You've probably got some sort of collapsible cooking pot on you because let's face it, you're Varric. I'm gonna go with the staple of you can probably make a nice stew. You've probably got a load of vegetables and various different bits of jerky you could chuck in there. You can make a broth and eventually make it into some sort of thick stew you can serve to everybody. Nice. I'm gonna and do that, and I'm gonna say that someone else has to do the dishes. <laughs> That's the law of Chef So, <sighs> you all close in and gather around the campfire. Uh, you get handed food. Um, Varric, again, produces probably pop up plastic, not plastic, but like we get pop up plastic bowls. Like you probably get pop up metal bowls or something <laughs> that you hand around to everybody. <laughs> Um, and you can all enjoy a nice meal sitting on this beach. And as you look around, you can't really tell what time of day it is. You're a bit tired, but um, the sky is just a wash of sort of pastel blue pink colours, and you can't see the sun, and you can't see a moon. You can just see bright colours and the glittering mist. By the way, uh, Hannibal will give her own food tourism. Okay. And uh, just half extra. Feed Arissa. Alrighty. So, you're sat around, eating, possibly drinking, sitting on the beach, having some food in the evening. Did you want to have any discussion before you, I'm assuming, do you want to sleep for your rest or do you want to just sit for a bit and have a short rest? Um, let's go sleep so we can get... Yeah, but it would be a good idea. I'll take first uh, first watch. Yeah. Uh, DM, just... <laughs> how would the Vitharitas summon steed spell go with magical shenanigans? <laughs> it takes you a little bit longer than it usually would, and you find yourself having to concentrate a lot harder. But it, 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 it does work. He's going to be a little confused at why it was so hard, uh, but he will proceed to um, pat his steed on the head and then plonk himself down for food and then pass out. Alrighty, so Varric is taking first watch. Who would like second? Uh, Hannibal will be in the semi meditative sleep mode, so she'll be making sure that Varric doesn't go away, but 
also resting at the same time. Okay. Okay. So she can have second watch. Yep, that is okay. And who would like third? Um, how long is one watch? Like, do I have time to do the four-hour trance in just one watch? Like... Uh, no. Okay. Um, actually, yes. Yeah, I'm going to say yes. In that case, I'm going to volunteer for the last watch as well. Okay. All right. Okay. So, Varric, Hannibal, and then Varric again. Okay. Uh, so, Varric, can you roll me a perception check for your watch? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, Vatheritas, according to his gift, has just passed out face first in the sand. At which uh, Narvinier will step out of the fireplace and she will um, sort of push some of the sand into sort of like a pillow shape just under your head. So you'll wake up slightly more comfortable than that. Alright. Varric, as you sit on your watch hearing the muffled sandy snores of the paladin and the disgruntled noises that Hannibal occasionally makes, and the farts of the gnome, <laughs> which we've almost all forgotten about, but no, they still happen. <laughs> you think you hear whispers coming from the tree line, but if you look behind you, you see nothing. It's every so often you hear a sort of and then it disappears. That's not uh, creepy at all. You know what? That's exactly what he's going to whisper to himself. That's <laughs> not creepy at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, other than that, Varric, your watch passes um, uneventful. I'd like to do one more thing. Okay, then. Um, I'd like to hold the Idre. Like the one vial of Idrit that I have left. Oh, uh-huh. t- I have two of them left. Sorry. Okay. But I'd I'd like to hold one of them up to like the sky, to see how it behaves in the light and in this confused magic world or thingy. Okay. Um, and then I'd like to carefully put it away in a place that it's easy to reach. Okay. As you hold it up, um, it sort of swirls a little bit in the vial, and you can see that it's bubbling a little bit as well, like tiny little bubbles rise from the middle of the liquid and plop on the surface on the top of the vial. (laughs) And it's glowing a very, very sort of bright blue. He'll laugh a bit at that almost lava lamp-like... Potion consistency. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll like put it back. Ooh, does he have time to practice like some fighting? I would say yes. And seeing Can as I you rolled one of... a fairly low perception. Um, <laughs> yeah. Can I like borrow the paladin's shield for Which a bit? One? Or is he... <laughs> The, the, the one with the crest on it, like the, the, the very fancy one that he oh, had the before. proper one, not not the yeah. misbehaving one. No, no his, his proper one, because that one is the cool-looking shield, and Varric wants to feel cool. Okay. Um, Vatheritas, do you have your passive perception to hand? Uh, do, do, do. Yes, it's 11. Okay, I'm going to say that, like, Varric, you can probably steal the shield without him waking up. Nice. Just I'd because, like, to... like, your lowest roll for stealth is probably, like, ridiculous. <laughs> my, my lowest roll for stealth would be a 13 on a nat 1. Yeah, so, yeah, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm going to steal the shield. I'm going to, like, practice a bit just, like, fighting with a shield because I am proficient with it but have never used it. So I'd, he'd like to try out what it feels like to wear, carry a shield and 
like be the awesome frontline fighter guy. <laughs> Aww. And on that, Hannibal, um, you come. Uh, you were already conscious, but you sort of you you uh, are aware that enough hours have passed that your watch can begin. You sort of um, look around and really pay more attention to Varric practicing sparring and sort of go, yeah, yeah, take that and that, yeah, 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 tank, tank, Varric, yeah, um, practicing with the shield. Varric, you can stop your little show and go to sleep now. It's my turn. <laughs> Uh, okay, and he like muffled the shield away so that as as if she shouldn't have seen that, and he like carefully drag it along and place it half over Verti as if it's like just there, somewhat where he left it, but it's in a different spot. Okay, <laughs> and then he goes sit uh, in front of the fire and meditate because that's like his trance, and then okay. he's gone for All four right. hours, like mentally. <laughs> Hannibal, is there anything you'd like to do on your watch? Uh, she walks up and starts looking around. She still eyes the, the the dust in the sky very suspiciously. She doesn't like it. So she puts it on her hoodie, the, her hood of her, mm-hmm. her coat, and she stares around and she feels a bit uncomfortable because she can't hear any wind. She can hear animals or bugs miles and miles and she it makes her anxious about this place yeah it's very very quiet but at the same time breathing with magic is very odd you can't hear little creatures scampering you can't hear worms burrowing in the earth miles beneath you you can just hear the sort of pulse of magic um can you do me a perception check Hannibal yes I can Oh, nice. Okay. Cool. Uh, you as well. You hear whispering coming from further along the tree line. And you hear some sort of call. If you had to name it anything, you'd probably call it a bird cry, but that was definitely not a bird. And <coughs> it was some sort of creature signalling to another creature. But the rest of your well, work passes it's... uneventfully. Yeah, she just shrugs it. As long as it doesn't attack us, uh, it's none of my business. What she will do, she will grab the shield. Uh, first, she will snap her fingers in front of Varric. Uh, he won't react, I hope. But do no. you react? Okay. Um, and she will go to Verti and drag the shield so it's by Ver- uh, Varric's feet to incriminate him, and then she'll sit down on the sand and just wait. <laughs> Luckily, I have last watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she does uh, uh, restore her shield on around the razor. Okay. And she is constantly a bit worried that the magic will affect the baby, but she okay. can't do anything about it at this point. Every time you check, seems fine but you can continue to be worried that is fine uh varic you awaken from your watch and as you uh stretch your arms your wrist clang clang clang, hits something metal and you look around to see that the shield is like right next to you whoa 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 whoa, wait wait what what i i (sighs) and he's like carefully picking it up and almost do you know that solid snake stealth animation? <laughs> yes. Well, that is like sniper, no sniping. <clears throat> clambering over, like underneath the shield, and then like he'll drop the shield immediately next to, or well, in this case because he's slightly less careful about like being stealthy about it because the shield returns to him anyway for some weird fucking reason. (laughs) He's gonna like drop it near slash on Verti. Okay. Um, Can I perhaps put a little curse on the shield so it follows him around (laughs) during the entire night that he's awake? (laughs) Um, You could like enchant it so that like whenever he's not looking at it it just like it like bounces and appears next to him 
Yes, yes, I shall do that. You notice, Hannibal, that this magic you can cast like it, it it takes a little while longer but other than that it's fine this this magic will it works huh curious i don't like this place anyways Farrick, i shall meditate yeah good go do that um also mean... do be careful i believe that shield is more sentient than you think she warns as she goes to take a nap and Varric, for the next four hours, anytime you look away from the shield, the shield reappears right next to you. Um, the Theratas, could you please do me a constitution check? Constitution check. That will be a 12. Okay. Makes sense in my brain, anyway. Um, all right, so you're sort of quite deeply asleep. At some point, you have a very realistic dream that you are fighting some sort of demonic, shadowy creature that looks scarily like Varric, and it punches you in the gut, and you can hear it clang off your armour, and it's almost as if he's hit you with a huge metal rod or something, and, you, oh! and when you wake up, you feel a little bit bruised along your ribs. Like, you're healed, you're fine, you've got no hit points, but you feel a little bit like something did hit you. <laughs> he sort of pokes his breastplate in a few places in confusion. <laughs> and then we'll just shrug and start to gather his things and then wonder where his shield is. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you notice that the shield is over by Varric, who is looking quite cross at it. And He's yes, gonna look at. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna glance at the shield and then at Varric and go. You could have asked to borrow that before you... I, I I, didn't try to borrow it. It follows me. Like, look. And Varric's gonna walk towards the foot's edge away from the shield and, like, intently look at a tree or something. Hannibal, does the shield stay where it is? Or is it still gonna follow Varric? Yes, it stays where it is. <laughs> the shield stays yes, where it, it is. Stays where it is. <laughs> Wait, didn't you say... F oh, four hours is the what shift. Yeah, yes. shit. Well, she can control it to stop as well, so... <laughs> yeah, she's so, not completely asleep. God damn it. <laughs> but there is the sword just sort of crouch down next to his shield. Look at Varric, look at the shield. Look at Varric again and go, must have been something in the water. <laughs> and they just pick his shield up. Yeah, your shield is behaving weird. <laughs> and this is the shield that wasn't misbehaving yesterday. This is the other shield. Could you scold this one as well? The shield is misbehaving. This one has so far done its job. What? Stalking me throughout my watch? <laughs> I'm here trying to protect your stuff and your shield is annoying me? It's not enchanted to do anything. It's just a standard shield. <laughs> Well then, why is it annoying me? Why is it following me? <laughs> it's... It has no way of following you, Varric. It's not a magic shield. Well, it, it did, though. It jumped. I did tell you not to drink the water, but no. You had to drink the water. Now you're seeing things, Varric. <laughs> At that, Varric is going to connect the dots. And he's going to waltz over to, to Hannah. <laughs> and he's going to go, you did this. Me? Tell I was him. asleep the whole time. Tell him. I'll tell him what I did my first watch, and then you, you tell him what you did to me and the shield afterwards. It's the water. Don't listen to him. It will pass. Meanwhile, the gnome farts silently <laughs> in her sleep. So... Pythagoras was going to fold his arms and 
sort of give them both that look of he he doesn't know which of them he trusts less right now. <laughs> <laughs> and just give like a mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm gonna say at this point um at this point Abricity and everyone else will start to wake up. <laughs> rolls over but um oh morning did anything happen well his shield's annoying me okay good morning <laughs> yes good morning and then I'm gonna fly up so that like so that the shield can't annoy me anymore alright Varric <laughs> do me a strength check uh oh. <laughs> oh, okay. 13 total. Okay. Um, 13. Okay. Yeah. How high are you flying up? Well, uh, just high enough so that if the shield teleports behind me, it'll fall, make a noise, and people will notice it. Okay. So about 10, 15 feet? Yeah, something like that. All right. You shoot up into the air and you get to about 10 feet exactly and your head collides with something that is ah. like it's like solid mush <clears throat> um you take seven points of damage um <laughs> from hitting this it, it it's not it's like a force it's not a physical thing it doesn't seem like it's an invisible something um but yeah, you sort of rub your head and look up. You can just see sky and everything above you, but um, yeah. Why is there invisible, painful mashed potatoes above us? <laughs> that is exactly what it felt like. <laughs> that That's what Varric is saying out loud. <laughs> so Vitharicus is going to look upwards at Varric and go and actually try to sound exactly like Varric, not on purpose, however. And just repeat what he said about mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> As in, what the hell are you talking about now? I did warn you that this place could be a pocket dimension. They are very small. Well, Verti, I, I mean, I, I, can I try to lift up the paladin and like <laughs> stuff him in the mush as well, so that if he it... feels it and trusts me? Sure. The Theratas, do you sleep in your armor? Uh, yeah. Varric, well, Varric, strength it. check. Verti, do you trust me? He's going to look at his cloak, the crown on Rito's head, and a few other, like, just at everyone else, and then look at Varric and go, in certain contexts, yes. <laughs> well, I, I want to prove to you that I'm not drunk or anything with the mashed potatoes, because they are above us and they are hurting me. And how far above you are they? Uh, ten feet. You saw how high I, I was flying. About that high. Also, so where's the shield now? He's just going to tap the shield on his back. Okay, good. <laughs> and then he's going to take it off and take one of his javelins, look at Varric, and then just hurl it upwards. Okay. Um, you hurl it up, and sure enough, it, when it gets to about 10 feet in the air, the tip of the, 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 the tip sort of like, doo -doo. it doesn't make a noise as it hits something, but it just stops and then clatters back down to the beach. See, I try to catch it so that it doesn't like dig through his face or something. <laughs> The therapist will just be scratching his head. Well, I haven't seen the sky do that in a while. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 that, that, that's what I thought as well. I mean, I could fly earlier. Why is it hurting me now? So, this only exists in the Pocket There's nothing <laughs> beyond. <laughs> Why would someone create this? That's a good question. 
maybe we should maybe we should find Ooh, we should go to the marshmallows and find out. <laughs> I'm sorry, if you get the sugar rush, I'm knocking you unconscious. Sugar. So, I thought created this place to hide the shadow. Does it already exist and it's just sticking? Isn't the, aren't the shards somewhat sentient? Well, when you take them to the astral plane, yeah. Well, I did hear something last night. Look, it sounded somewhat like a call. But not for us. I don't know if it was some kind of species, but it didn't sound like anything I've heard before. And that is saying something. So Vitharitus is going to sit down and go, did it sound like this? And then he's going to mimic every bird he's ever heard. (laughs) <laughs> Do I recognize any of it? 20 minutes later. <laughs> Hannah, you heard the whispers too? Good, I'm not going crazy yet. Ah, good. I believe you were always crazy, Varric. I'm not going crazier. Yes, that's acceptable, yes. But yes, I did hear them. But they didn't seem hostile. No, we shouldn't pay them attention and just move on to the marshmallows. I agree. That is fine by me. We do need to go there anyways. (laughs) (laughs) So far in my notes, I've had to write the phrase Varric and marshmallows about once every three lines. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well yeah I guess our best bet is going and getting marshmallows that's where there's okay. Arissa will chime in and say well I mean I suppose the dust is quite thick over there I guess Varric we could go Marshmallows. <laughs> yes, we could go marshmallows. <laughs> so Vitharitus will just shrug and go well any direction or probably take us somewhere and then go and mount up. And then look down at Arissa and go, would you like a ride? <laughs> Arissa will accept the ride. So he'll help her up. Alrighty. So Arissa and the Theratas are on. Hey, hey, Varric, let's go zoom zooms. Hmm? Fly to the marshmallows. Yeah, we're going to the marshmallows. Don't go too high. But if I fly up, that hurts. What I mean, just stay low. So uh, I'd love to piggyback if you don't mind. Thanks. Yeah, of course. Hop on. <laughs> so I'm going to ride an elf to the marshal. <laughs> <laughs> love it. <laughs> um, so Arissa will be on the map with the Theratas and. <laughs> oh, marshmallow gifts. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> um. Uh, Ragnar and Reedy will be on the carpet and Hannibal, you can come along in whatever manner you would like and keep up with everybody uh, Can she just float? Yeah, you can she float as long as, as long as your head does not reach 10 feet above the ground, you can float Yeah, okay, then I shall float after them Cool Alright, so uh where would you like to go, guys? Um, basically, you've got beach to either side of you, and to get to the mountains, you have to go through the trees. Hmm. Let's go into the forest. Yay. <laughs> All right. I'm going 
to give you guys some pictures of the forest now, just before I upload them and put them on the thing. Let me quickly fetch what happens when the ver uh, Varric reaches the forest. I wish I liked sweets, man. Marshmallows look so yummy, but they they taste ugh. <sighs> That's where you're wrong. Marshmallows are amazing. I wish. I wish. I, 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 no sweet works with me. It's a shame. You saw it, but well, you ate everything. I didn't eat anything. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was I at a Bothwell that you he were at as well? He wasn't at the same Bothwell as you. Yep. We can verify. Every we'll time verify. I imagine Hanif, like just floating along, though, I just imagine this. <laughs> <laughs> sure, that works. <laughs> Mary, Poppins. Mary Poppins glitter craziness, love it. All right, I have sent you guys. It's loading any second now. There you go. All right, some pictures of the sort of place you are in. Again, there's no sun, there's no moon. It's still very well lit, and the light seems to be sort of emanating from the little tiny wisps of light that are glittering in all these sparkles in the air through the mist. You um, trot and fly and um, zoom your way across the sand. In fact, I don't think anyone is actually touching the sand with their feet at this point, are they? We've got two on the carpet, we've got people on the mount, and then we've got Varric who's sort of hovering with the gnome. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't it. Yeah. Oh. So, you guys make your way along the beach and you get to the, uh, the the breach of the trees and you guys start to move through them. They're not very close together. There's no particular path, but you can pick your way through them. The trees are all various colours. The leaves range from lavender to blue to green to inky black in places. and. They're all adorned with tiny little lights and tiny little colours that seem to be just moving about on the wind. The grass under your feet is mossy and thick and ranges from rich, rich apple green all the way through to a sort of turquoisey and then it fades to yellow. The trees themselves have sort of silvery bark and there's a faint air of sort of silvery gold all around the place as well. You move through the trees fairly easily. Um, some of them huge and tall and towering, some of them young and sapling-like. And could everybody please do a perception check? Um, I'm, I can do a perception check, but then I have to be right back for a second. Okay. Ugh, um, it was low. Well, no, no, 20. And then BRB. Alrighty. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, it's 11, but I'll take it. <laughs> because the other option was bad. Okay. Alrighty. Hannibal and the Theratas, as you are trotting and floating your way through the trees, <coughs> you, Hannibal, you can hear again and with Eratash you hear for the first time whispering. You can't make out words or a language, you can just hear sort of faint hisses and any time you look you can't see anyone but you can hear in the back of your very paranoid mind it might be that the trees were talking themselves but you can hear sort of whisper, 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 and uh, this continues as you move through in all different directions. Varric and Apricity, you guys also hear the whispers, but every so often, as you glance around, you catch little pairs of eyes staring at you from high up in the trees <coughs> between the leaves, and one pair of deep pink eyes staring at you from within one of the tree trunks itself. It blinks and disappears. Then later on you think you spot the same pair of eyes in another tree further on. Hey! Do you, there's something over there. Do 
Does anybody else see that there's something there too? Are they, are they eyes looking at us? Well, there has to be something living in this forest. But they're like actively watching us. That one's following us, look. Vatheritas will look in that general direction and go, I think I heard something along the lines of the whispering that's Hannibal and Varric were on about. As Apricity points and says, there, there, you see it there. Now that she's pointing at it, you two as well can see a pair of deep pink eyes that seem to come from inside a dark tree trunk somewhere up ahead. But again, they blink and they're not there anymore. But there are just a little frown and shrug and go. Well, they've been following us for a while then, but they haven't made any move against us. Whatever they are. Still wearing. Um, how big are the eyes? Is it like, like cat-sized or like person-sized? From how far up the tree they were and the approximate size based on the tree itself, they were humanoid. Definitely suspicious then. Um, can we see an edge of the forest, or are we, like, in just thick of trees? Complete thick of trees. Um, through the canopy, though, you can see the sky, so it's not completely um, encased over with leaves. And every so often there's a clearing and a little stream and things, so you can't see the very edge of the trees, which you have to assume might be the edge of the island itself, but there is there is gaps here and there. Um, is it possible to send Warmin up, fly up and see how big You can do. Uh, and to make sure that we're travelling in the right direction as well. We're in some weird place. And... <laughs> um, Warmin flies up, and when Warmin gets to ten feet, dunk! Ah! Uh, bonks. Bonks the little fluffy head on whatever this, um forces that's keeping you grounded as it were um can look around from 10 feet up but can't see much more than you at this point um see can see across one of the clearings that there's more trees and the stream is leading this way you go sort of walking without being next to it you're heading sort of parallel along with the stream um but other than that can't see the tree tops or anything I guess we keep going and just... As long as they aren't bothering us, I don't see what's the harm in letting them follow us. In their territory, I don't know if they do. Pretheritus is gonna... Think for a good long minute and then dismount from the elk and then walk alongside it. Alright. And he's going to take his normal shield and then hold it up over his head and go, Varric, do you want this for a bit? Oh, Oh, is he still BRB? He's BRB. Sorry. Yep. We will tell him of your generous offer soon. Um, are you offering him the normal shield that he's scared of, or the shield that wasn't behaving? The normal shield that he's scared of. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Apricity, could you do me a perception check for Warmit? Sure. Because ten feet's not a lot, but it will, with, with Warmit's sight, just be a little extra. Oh, she's good. Um, where's your fear? Uh, 
Um. Uh, Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Um, Warman can communicate with you. And in a way which you would recognise, circles back and indicates to you that um, Warman has seen something interesting. Um, yeah, when the, if I concentrate, I can see through my eyes when she mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, so you look through Warman's eyes and you can see further ahead there is a clearing in the brush and you can see something, it looks like a nest. There's like sticks and flowers and things all sort of woven together. And you can see something in it. It's sort of blue, silvery, white. Might be some sort of bird. You're not sure from this distance and neither is Warman. Um, is it the direction that we're it's roughly the direction you're going in. It's further ahead, maybe a little bit to the west, but not a great deal off your path. Um, well, I shall come back to my event and lay that. Guys, there's something ahead that I don't know. Might need to be careful. It's well, as it's quite potentially the only thing that's been out of the ordinary so far, we could go and investigate it. Could give us a clue as to what's going on here. Sure. Whichever you prefer. Birth will just shrug and look around a bit and go which way and I point in the vague direction of future so Vitharitas is just going to walk on over alright are you all going to go with Vitharitas yeah I don't think it's a good idea to separate (laughs) let's split up and look for clues no never do that never (laughs) we all learn this as children we're of the right generation we watch Scooby Doo we know you never stop. <laughs> yes. Also, the elk with Arissa on its back is just trotting along behind Vitharitis. <laughs> I need to look up elk noises. I just feel like every so often it, like, you know, like licks its lips and sort of. You know, something like that. I can imagine it. Um, so, everyone all together will go either. All right. Um, after maybe a quarter of an hour, 20 minutes of walking, um, you get to a clearing. It's quite a small clearing. It's very round, almost perfectly circular. And sort of dead center is a collection of twigs, sticks, leaves, some flowers, some petals. And they've all been put together. A pricity. Mm-hmm. Can you do me a nature check? Mm-hmm with advantage and Varric you can do this as well Varric nature check but no advantage Apricity you get advantage okay it's right right oh in which case just Apricity (laughs) (laughs) um okay that was mildly uh 16 okay Apricity as you're looking at this um as you're getting closer you realise that this is not how birds build their nests or at least this is not an experienced creature building a nest, this is pretty much a load of sticks and bits of moss and flowers that have been shoved together, this is almost some sort of improvised shelter 
Um, <laughs> and as you get closer to the clearing, you realise that the nest itself is larger than a typical bird's nest. In fact, as you walk up towards the edge of it, it is large enough that the Theratas could sleep in it if he was curled up. And inside... Oh, hello, Barrack! Oh, you can't hear a shit. <laughs> I love it. I'm back. Did I miss I can hear you. Weird nest thing. Hi, yeah. Barrack! Hey. Um, so I won't make you roll. not quite a nest. Um, Warman had a look into where you were going and spotted a nest with what you thought was a bird inside, so you've gone to have a look. And you've got up to it, and Apricity and you probably as well, Varak, have looked at this nest and realised that it's not a typical bird nest. It hasn't been made very well. It was made by a creature who didn't know what they were doing particularly, and it looks like some sort of improvised shelter. It's sort of like sticks and moss, leaves, flowers have been shoved together in this clearing. And I will show you a picture of what is inside it. But before I do that, I will pause the recording because we're on an hour and I will do part two. So we'll be back momentarily with what's in the nest. What's in the nest? <laughs> it's not that scary, I promise. <laughs> 